third all past champions here at Royal Green Golf Clubs. Welcome guys. Thank, Thank you for being here. And over to the media. Mike, go ahead. I just wanted to ask each of you guys, what do you like most about this course? Obviously, having won on it before, you won twice. Yeah, I mean, listen, it's a, it's a really good golf course. Uh, wind blows here. I think you have to hit a lot of different shots. Um, you know, it, it, it asks all the questions. You got to you know, put it in the fairway and some key tee shots. But, um, you know, to me, it's just a big iron play golf course. You have to control your ball well. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it, it can really play difficult. You know, I think this wind that blows out of the west, which is left right on 16, pretty much the prevailing wind here. And I think uh, all of us up here have seen that wind and obviously played well in that wind direction. So, you know, looking forward to, uh, you know, trying to have a good weekend here. Yeah, I mean, I, along with what Graham said, it's just... You know, I like that it, the wind picks up every afternoon. It seems like, well, every day about, probably just about now, it'll start blowing. And, and it makes it challenging. And you got to hit you know, quality iron shots. You got to drive it well, too, because fairways are pretty narrow. And if you're in the rough, it's really hard to control the golf ball. So um, I think it kind of makes you do everything well if you want to shoot good scores. Yeah, I think it's pretty simple. I think we like winning more than anything. Um, yeah, the golf course is great, but, you know, at the end of the day, you, you play to, you know, win tournaments. And for me, I, I haven't won as much as these guys. And um, the way I won is pretty awesome. So uh, that's what I would say. I, I have not, no. I literally just saw it. I just got here yesterday. But... Yeah, it was pretty awesome. I would love to do it again for the Nimblicks to get on the podium, though. That'd be pretty awesome. Uh, yeah, I, I thought about it a lot. I got into the Masters and I got into every other major. Um, played well once I won. Uh, obviously, things went a little crazy when we got back to the States. Um, so, you know, just new adversity in my life. You know, it's pretty weird to win and be hated, so it's pretty funny, I think. Thank you. Uh, you want me to go or you? Oh, Graham's got this thought. I'll let him go. <laughs> well, I, I think it's impossible for the guys to give us assurances. You know, I mean, we we all agree, and I think you know most people in world golf would agree that um, you know the field out here is to a certain strength now, where you know it's impossible to ignore the talent that's out here. I mean, this guy standing in the middle of the three of us, um, if his world ranking is inaccurate, then the whole system's inaccurate. You know, so uh, you know all the only assurances that we get from Liv is that we're ticking all the boxes that we can tick and you know continue to do what is necessary for the OWGR to look at us the right way and uh, you know hopefully it's inevitable but you know the longer it goes on the games that are being played um, you know we're, we're, we're all we want is a is a kind of a, a fair court if you like and uh, you know to recognize exactly that it is, what it is that we're doing out here and I you know like I said, I, I feel like Liv tried to do all everything they possibly can to be legitimate in the eyes of the OWGR. I mean, we've got some quality, quality players out here. And to me, thank you, Grant. You know, the world ranking, Harold, <laughs> love you lots. Um, you know, the word official has to go away from OWGR if they don't, if they don't take care of the players that are playing out here. That was unbelievable, Graham. Yeah. Thanks. Well, well said. Um, I, for me, I, uh, I think we knew what we were getting into. I think, um, I think it's easy to sit here and say what could happen, what should happen. But, you know, obviously, you know, for me, I, I knew what was going to happen. You know, like it wasn't going to be easy. And I think the people at Live have done an unbelievable job of just trying to – because I don't know the check marks. I could – you know, honestly, I could care less. I knew exactly what was going to happen. I knew – what could happen in my career and you know I accept that you know and it's I've had a great time out here so like the world ranking thing is you know we, it's just been a part of golf for so long and now all of a sudden you know some feathers have been ruffled so it's like kind of it's just awkward it's funny though I think but it is what it is 
No, man. Quit kind of calm down. I'm not trying to get cut. I don't know what it takes, to be honest with you. Um, obviously, they inform us all the time and give us updates. And, you know, obviously, we're super thankful for that. But, like, I'm pretty, you know, just in the middle. Yeah, do we deserve it? Yeah, the field's unbelievable. So it's, uh, it's sad sometimes. I just laugh and just keep going. I like playing golf. These guys are a lot of fun. I think it's really cool how we hang out and do things that we, you know, don't do as much on the PJ Tour. I think it's very big. They call it uh, family. And whenever you leave that family, you become hated. And, and a real family, like, no matter what your son does or your daughter, she's their family. So you take care of them, and it's just not that way. Uh, I, I think they covered it all. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, Teddy Fenn with Luckiest Golfers on Earth. Um, Graham, you, you just said that they're incomplete, the, the world ranking points. And if, if they're incomplete and they're clearly using stall tactics to, to push this down the road as far as they can, if they're inaccurate, does it make sense for another organization to step up and do the job that they're not doing? You mean to have another set of rankings? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Harold Varner, yeah, what about that guy? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know enough about the technicalities regards, you know, another ranking system, if, if someone was to create another ranking system. Um, you know, to me, when I look at the UWGR, it is to give everyone a fair opportunity around the globe who, you know, is a professional player playing in a strength of field that's relative to be uh, recognized uh, within that ranking system to give everyone a fair crack at the whip, you know. So, you know, like I said, I, I love the fact that Liv's been so transparent with us trying to make sure that they're ticking all the boxes, do the job that they need to, to do to get a fair case with the OWGR, um, you know, the guys that sit on that board, I mean, obviously there's a huge amount of confliction on that board. And the longer this goes on, uh, we have a huge amount of deterioration in current world ranking points for the guys out here. You know, and if that doesn't retrospectively kind of get taken care of, you know, by the time that we do get ranking points, our strength of field is going to be relatively much less than it needs to be, you know. So we just get hurt the longer that this game gets played and uh, it needs to be taken care of ASAP. I mean, obviously, I mean, Graham pretty much summed it up, you know, exactly what I think about this all. It's, it's we're going to get world ranking points, you know, it's, right now it's a matter of when. And, yeah, I mean, just the longer it, the longer it takes, the, you know, obviously the, the, the more irrelevant it becomes for us because it's, you know, if you wait too long, all our rankings are going to drop so much that it's not even going to really... It's not going to matter. So yeah, hopefully they do the right thing and, you know, we'll know something here in the next week or so. And, you know, like I said, hopefully they do the right thing and give us points and then it, this will all be over. We won't have to talk about it anymore. <laughs> uh, yeah, I – shit, my bad. He's talking. <laughs> The European tour being involved? Correct. You know, well, listen, I mean, I, when I won this tournament in 2020, I was very much like Harold, you know, this, it got my golf game back on track and my life back on track to where I wanted to be in the game. No one questioned me about, you know, the people that were paying the bills and the country that I'd won the golf tournament. And there was absolutely no politics involved. Um, you know, the European tour had brought um, a nation to the table that were curious about the game of golf and that wanted to um, that wanted to be involved, and, and that was exciting. You know, the European Tour have obviously played a huge amount of golf out here in the Middle East and been incredibly successful with that. So, to me, this was just another great opportunity to come to, you know, uh, a, a nation that were wanting to put money into the game of golf. And when I won here in 2020, it was um, 
you know, same as Harold, it got me back in the top 50 in the world, got me in the Masters, got me doing all the things that I had missed for a few years. And uh, it was a huge win for me at the time. And it was uh, something I was very proud of, you know. So here we stand two years later, two and a half years later. And I mean, the golfing globe, you know, has changed so much. And, and the, you know, the opinions on what we're doing here in this country have, you know, done a full 180. It's, it's you know, it's, you know, obviously there's a huge amount of that is, uh, you know, not real and just created by the media, unfortunately. Graham, that is so good. Man. I don't even know if I could put an answer together like that. <laughs> uh, James Sean McKenna, Inside Golf Australia, Bendy Golf. Um, to the golf, uh, do you find playing in courses like this in the environmental conditions here that your ball distances and flights can change on not only a daily basis but an hourly basis? And it's a bit different from other parts of the world where you can see fairly consistent weather patterns. So I'm just interested in how the heat and the, the changes in the wind and even the atmosphere with the dust particles, because you guys are so precise, how that can affect your game while you're actually playing in the middle of the round here. To, to me, it goes the same distance, but Bryson probably can answer that a little bit better. <laughs> he's got a ball to the edge. But for me, the ball goes just normal distance. Far. Real far. You just hit it far. I mean, it goes normal. It always goes far, <laughs> DJ. I know, that's normal, right? <laughs> <laughs> Asshole. But does the, you know, the daily conditions, can they change dramatically in relation to the way you structure your game around the course here? Yeah. I think the weather's been unbelievable, the events I've played. Last week it rained, and that was it. And it rains in America, too, when we play, and we have thunderstorms. So I think it's pretty – I don't think anything's really different. I did think the ball last week was traveling a long way, though. <clears throat> I don't carry yardage books, so I don't really know. I just hit it and be like, all right, let's go. I've never carried a yard spot. Wow. I think it's not sense. my greatest thing in the world. That's awesome. It makes oh, yeah, sense. exactly. <laughs> right, what is it? All right, man. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know. We were talking about this yesterday. I'm, you know, I was really regretting my decision to come here. You know, it's just been terrible. Yeah. You know, I was, I was sitting there last night thinking about it, and yeah, it was, it was really bothering me a lot. Yeah. I, I know. I just, yeah. Just can't get over it. Hello, gentlemen. So we have uh, some local media here. We'll be asking the questions in Arabic, and I'll be translating. Sure. We open the floor to them now. So, Sophan? Uh, Sopan is from the Saudi Press Agency and he's welcoming you guys back to Saudi Arabia and he's asking you in terms of you guys being former winners here in Saudi and this time around you're coming but for a different tournament with a different system. You used to be of course but is this going to be any different and how are you planning on tackling this? Uh, Okay. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to attack it the same way. Um, our team played well. I mean, these guys have played more events than I have. Um, I'm just really invested in the team. I, I really like it. We, uh, we're one stroke out of podium. Uh, so I, that part of it to me is super fun. Uh, we're underdogs, and, you know, we're just trying to take out the aces. I don't even know what team Graham plays for, but Max, I want to take Max. them out too. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's, it's just competitive, uh, I think. All 48 of us want to, we just want to compete, you know, and the team aspect just makes it more fun. So I, is it different? You still have to play well to, you know, for your team to do well. So it's, it's a lot of fun. Last week was, it was good for me. I, you know, I told the Niblicks we were going to do well, but we're still in dead last and we finished fourth. So it's that part of it for me being an underdog is a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm one of those teams ahead of the Niblicks. Um, <laughs> happened no to we, we actually cashed last week for the first time, which was uh, – was a lot of fun, but I think what Harold's saying is that um, you know the team element of this is uh, way more intriguing and fun. And I, you know, talking to all the players 
Um, the team element is something that they're really highly invested in and get a lot out of it and really enjoy kind of, you know, winning as a four and, you know, really enjoying it kind of sharing that experience together. So, um, you know, I think, you know, this golf course this week plays a little differently, I think, from how it plays in February. You know, you know the golf course that the three of us have won on coming out of sort of the winter time here in Saudi Arabia, I think, you know, the golf course is a little drier, a little firmer. It seems a little softer this week coming out of the summer. Obviously, more water, um, that type of stuff, no overseed. So uh, the golf course certainly uh, plays a little different for, uh, from how it does in February. That's a lot to translate, sorry. No, no worries. <laughs> DJ? Go ahead. Why don't you translate? Uh, so I'm not going to translate no, the answers. You, we're oh, we're got later part. on. She told us. Um, you know, for me, yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's no different than the, the Saudi Invitational that's you know, that we play in January or in the January, February. You lose to the Niblicks, it'll be different. I'll be talking shit. Well, <laughs> we've already got the number one seed, so it really doesn't matter. <laughs> no comment. Yeah. Well, other than I just want to beat you, so. Uh, but, yeah, the, the golf tournament-wise, it, you know, the, the course is different right now. It's just softer. That's about the only thing. It's in, it's in pretty good shape, though. It's just soft, which is yeah. kind of weird, you know, playing. You know, usually it's balls running, the fairways are firm greens the ball rolls out but um other than that the the tournament's gonna be the same we got a unbelievable field you know like we do every week and yeah i mean if you want to win you're gonna have to really golf your ball well thank you guys uh so i'll thank you Juan. Ahmed is from Al Medina and he's asking all of you guys as well uh, in terms of the weather. So you guys just came from Bangkok, uh, quite a different weather. And we have now uh, this weather here in Jeddah. Uh, in terms of, of the weather, is it going to be any different in your opinion? I'm going to lose a lot more weight for sure. It's hot. I mean, yeah, I it was know. hot last week. It's hot this week. Yeah. It's, it's actually like yesterday like lunchtime or noon or whatever, I went out. I played in the morning. It was extremely hot. But I went out like around noon and hit some balls. It was actually way nicer than it was last week. Just, yeah, I think the wind, you know, when the, the wind, wind blows, it, comes it makes off the it bearable. Pulls you down, yeah. but, Till you get to 16 and that wind's blowing and you're like, Whoa. Yeah, but that's what, <laughs> that's what makes that hole good. <laughs> yeah. For you, you can hit it. Uh, Juan, so I'll thank Yusuf. Okay. I so I'll thank Shabab. Thank you, guys. That will be it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it.